learn, explore, and develop an online mentorship initiative by IEEE BIT Mesra. Today, the top three participants from each project will be presenting their projects. I would like to now call Bhavya for elaborating more on the event. Bhavya. Yeah. So, uh, what is Lead? What was Lead uh, 2.0? So during this global pandemic, when everyone was stuck in their homes, uh, our club decided to organize an online mentorship program for uh, the K20 juniors, wherein they made the some, uh, wherein they made three projects under the mentorship of uh, K19 seniors. So it went on for around a month, uh, and it consisted of three projects, which were all centered around web development. For each project, all the participants were given four days for the preparatory purposes, and the next seven days for the building of project. uh so for uh, each project we have selected the top 3 projects and for the ranking of uh, like the first second and third we'll be having uh, judges for our today's event so the judges are archit bhaiya gyan bhaiya and puneet bhaiya so anubhav uh, you can introduce the project okay so we'll be starting with the first project now the first project was uh, portfolio building portfolio page building and uh, we'll be starting with lohitaksh malhotra Lohitaksh, you can start the presentation. Uh, just a second, I'm start sharing my screen. Uh, Indu, and uh, I hope my screen is visible now. Uh, yes. Uh, hi, my name is Lohitaksh Mohtar, and this is my presentation for the IEEE Lead 2.0 project. That was the portfolio project. The milestones were to get an about page, a skills page, a project page, and then just general responsiveness and animations. the text tag used was react js css and html uh, this is what the website looks like on different devices and so it is responsive uh, my general idea was to go for a comic or cartoon like feel so there is a lot of big bold text and flashy colors and animations and because neat code is always good i i factored the code into its own every component into its own subfolder along with its css files so the project is easily upgradable for any future changes Uh, this was my first react project big react project so i learned a lot and it was not just with react but also css uh, i also learned some css tricks and i also learned to deploy my website to github or github pages uh, i also faced some problems with just general responsiveness and performance issues but the big one was react router does not uh, allow with github pages so i had to work around that with the help of my seniors uh this is what the website looks like uh if i just refresh you can see there is a loading screen uh uh yes yeah. and there is also a 3d effect so if i scroll there is this parallax effect there are also a lot of animations these are my skills uh, if i hover on any of these you can see there is also some a little animation uh these are my projects normally these would be links but these are deactivated because you, i do not have many projects and this one just leads to the code for the portfolio project and this is my connections page so these are my socials if you like you can connect here that's all for my side thank you okay so the judges if you have any questions for lohit you can ask Uh, Lohit, can you share your screen again, man? Just a second. Yeah. Here it is. And uh -huh. can you go on the website? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Shantanu Tirum. Awesome, man. Can you scroll down? Go ahead. Scroll it down. Also, me looks good. So, uh, it's in React and Python. It's with React. Uh, okay, with just React. React right? These are my skills. Just awesome. React. Yes, normal. So, like, uh, have you used any yeah. other UI library along with React, or is just no, a framework? I did not use any Bootstrap or Mojo or anything. Okay, I so used it's... one npm package, and uh, that was for the loading screen uh, to change it. Change just for the like loading it. screen. Yes, uh, I had some issues getting that. I so any I, any specific font like libraries font or something. I used Poppins, but that was a direct import from Google Fonts. I did not use any library. 
okay cool so it's all basic css and uh, jsx right yes awesome man looks good mm. and the animations are done using css right yes css there are, some okay. there's one animation that was done with keyframes and that's the last animation with the spin and everything there is just normal css right so for basic curve. okay cool man this looks good and background images kahan se liye unsplash unsplash also okay. like chalo good yeah. unsplash has that like credits wala thing right or do they not have uh, there are some with they allow for credits there are some that are just get up usable mm -hmm. it depends on the creator and the ones i used did not have those credits like compulsory so right. i skip that part cool man and any any ui tests that you wrote uh, i did not write any ui tests i just used the default chrome like responsiveness checker okay okay cool right awesome yeah so like can you show the mobile page as well like can you yes you just will be great yeah this is what it would look like on mobile Cool man, it's it's a good enough start for like a portfolio project. Uh, so like, have you thought about maybe uh, letting others use a template of sorts from your like, portfolio? Most of these are just straight up components, and these are available on my GitHub. Like, if I go into my right. actual repo, which is here, I think. If I go into source and components, these are just all of these, and they also have their CSS. So. If you want, you can use them, and it is just basic JS JSX. It is easily editable. Cool man, this looks good. And any more questions for me? Achit. No, this looks really good. Yeah, and you are in first year, so it's really good that you get something like this. Thank you. So, um, let's move on to the second participant. So Mayuk Pankaj, please present your screen. Mayuk Pankaj, am I audible? Um, I hope I'm. Yeah. Live. Yeah, your screen is visible. You can yeah, you're live. So hello everyone. I'm Mayuk Pankaj, and I'll be presenting my portfolio website for IGPLE Lead 2.0. So the first project was a portfolio website, and the tech stack that I used was HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Bootstrap framework. Some of the milestones that were about page, a skills page, a project page to showcase the project, and code forces API integration. <coughs> so uh, some of the additional milestones that I achieved was a dark theme, and the keyframes animations like fading, fade out, drop down, uh, smooth scrolling, uh, responsive app design. Uh, GIF used for project so that the user can have an idea about the project without visiting the repository or video, and open graph metadata used for uh, search engine optimization. A short description: uh, It has all the basic features, and the home page has fading animation. It also comes with the dark theme that we developers love, and toggling the toggling dark theme also changes the image source. And for showcasing projects, I use GIF and charts. Page API for code process rating and submissions, and SVG icons uh, used for social media links. <clears throat> so let's move on to demonstration. Okay, go to. So I use GitHub Pages. So uh, you can see it's uh, fades in. So if we go dark mode. So it changes the background and the image changes to anonymous type. So how this works is by changing the background properties like background color and text color. Some of the technologies that I know: education, school. Some of the projects that I've worked on, uh, like a COVID app or blank calling bot, library manager. This is the code for this working, and you can connect with me on these platforms. So if you click on the burger nav, 
a slide now will uh, slide in and it will scroll down to the section so thank you that's what for me great presentation by you uh, so let's move on to the judges uh, do you have some questions for you um okay i'll go first uh, so dark theme ke liye what did you use man so like how are you basically doing it so dark theme ke liye kya kiya ki um uh, um class uh, list toggle kar raha hu right ek list hai light theme ka jisme text color background color white hai aur dusre mein dark blue hai right uh cool man uh, and like it's all uh, vanilla js and html css right ट्विटर इज वेल ओके So this all looks great, man. Like uh, you can maybe take it to another level by uh, maybe adding another uh, layer on top of it to modify your JS. I think your JS is has like a lot of white spaces, uh, so it reduces the first response time. But it, it's a light website, so it's okay, I guess. Um, um, so like, how was your experience while making it? Like, uh, do you have any questions for us? Like. Ki, how can you make this better or something then like you know? yeah i wanted some kind of like you know web storage uh, so that if the user is using the web dark theme then it loads on dark theme only yeah so you can store it in local storage no yeah local storage yeah or a cookie maybe where yeah. you feel like yeah the web storage or session storage yeah Hmm. Hello. Yeah, but hey. I think your voice is not audible. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Am I audible? Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you try out one thing on the website? Uh, oh, yeah. so uh, if i'm correct like the image also changes when you turn to dark mode right yeah so can you try like going back to light mode here so that uh, that's not working i was just from the light mode to light dark mode there was okay and if you change back the image won't change right like do you know what the issue is yeah uh, uh, like like i need to add one more condition Okay. If okay. the source is like uh, the anonymous image, then change back to. Okay. Yeah. Overall, the website looks really neat. Good job. Thank you, Pia. It's just a suggestion. The button which you have, which shows the uh, sidebar, like you should have that on the same side. Did you get my point? Uh, no, Bea. It was not audible. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Uh, yes, Bea. Oh, uh, yes, Bea. You are audible. So I was saying that uh, the button which you have, which is on the right side, which yeah, shows yeah. up the uh, about and skills. So this should be on like from the user point of view, it should be on the same side. Oh, Bea. Yeah. Yeah, that what I was saying. And did you use any PHP? So like these text tags are your personal text tag, right? This is not for this project. Hello. Oh uh, yes, we are you audible? But I didn't get your question. So the text tag which you have mentioned here, 
so these are the text tag for this project or this is like in general so the like have have you used any python in this because you have mentioned python python no we have not used any python yeah because in text tag okay this is your portfolio so okay. portfolio okay. Okay. okay i use python the web script project uh and the uh, slider like from where do you get the slider and these icons you must be uh, using some yeah uh, the icons i'm using iron icons mm -hmm. what about the, the slider slider is like uh, just a css so you have implemented this slider by yourself yeah uh, no i have a reference from some uh, website but like i have customized it no this okay. cool man okay. uh, uh so one quick suggestion so i think the project section that you have included uh, the gifs right for showing the animation of the website yeah yeah uh, so like for chrome i think i'll recommend using uh, videos directly so instead of having a gif uh, put an mp4 file it will load better okay uh, size will also be smaller as compared to a gif और अगर तुम सिर्फ डायरेक्टली वीडियो रेंडर कर दोगे इन इनफिनिट मोड इट विल बी बेटर देन अ जिफ आई नोटिस्ड सी इफ एनीथिंग एल्स कैन बी डन कूल आई मीन इन टर्म्स ऑफ सीएसएस एंड एचटीएमएल इट ऑल लुक्स गुड end of the day i think uh, your page speed comes into matter because you're showing your portfolio website should load quickly right uh, so i think uh, in terms of that as well it's great uh, just a few things here and there other than that i think uh, we'll have a yeah. look at the code code as well good one man yeah thank you so i have compressed the gifs and all oh. yeah i understand man you've compressed the gifs uh, but uh, uh, i think chrome uh, I'll, i'll share a link with you chrome renders video pretty quickly as compared to a gif i will look at right? that yeah sure. thank you can we move on to the next part okay okay, okay so yes we are the next we'll move on with sarjot singh sarjot you can start your presentation <coughs> okay then is my screen visible uh not right now hello i am uh, audible yeah you are audible yeah, you are audible but your screen, screen is not visible yet is it now um no not really okay i guess you can consider uh, rejoining okay uh mayuk you can deepen it um sadhya you can switch off the camera and then try okay now it's visible okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so let me present to you my uh, IIPLE lead project one, that is portfolio website. So the text tag I have used is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I haven't used any uh, libraries like React and and all. Then the live, then <clears throat> some I have used some minor libraries like uh, Jump or JS. Uh, I have used it to implement the smooth scrolling between sections. It provides some awesome features like uh, duration of the jump and uh, further animations like uh, like some animations I don't remember right now, but uh, gives a good effect. Then there's a magnific pop-up JS. It is used to create an image gallery. Uh, yeah, I'll show this in demo. Then there's a Code Forces API. to fetch code for the data and jquery it's a dependency of magnific pop up js and it's also and its ajax method is used in uh, used to fetch code for the data so 
what all milestones we were uh, assumed to cover we were we had to make about about page skills page projects page and there were some additional milestones as well like extracting code forces data uh, adding responsiveness to the website and animations then the features of the well <clears throat> what all features my website offer there's an app bar it's responsive uh, it links to different parts of the website using jump.js there's a landing section a uh, personalized section uh, where can, where a user can customize theme and font of the website then there's a project section uh, here is where i have implemented the image gallery and it also uh, has the links to my github repos uh, github repos of the projects and the projects themselves there's a code forces section by default it shows my rating and rank and user can query his or her custom handle it provides a link to the handle queried by the user there's a footer contains my social media handles then what according to me is the unique selling point of my project it's the customizability uh, as you can see there's a lot of bunch of options uh, for fonts and th themes as well finally what did i learn or improve by making this project uh, i had ample of practice with grid and flexbox also i worked a lot with media queries i learned how to use apis and improved my version control with git and github okay let us continue with the demo uh, there's a, there's a <clears throat> nav bar it's responsive then this this personalized page you can adjust the themes this is done by using css variables along with classes these google fonts can also be applied across the website uh, also notice that there are back to top buttons spread throughout this website okay there's a skills page provides a nice animation when hovered upon now this project section this was the image gallery i was talking about you can use arrow keys to see all now there is a code forces section by default it <coughs> shows my data for example Shit. if the handle is not found it also yeah. alerts you then yeah finally there is a social media footer that's all thank you uh just don't stop sharing man let it be there okay yeah awesome um cool this looks good uh i got two points uh one is your back to top button that you have instead of having multiple back to top buttons you could have a simple like a single up arrow button on the on the right bottom corner or somewhere on the screen True. uh so you don't have to implement it every time the other the alert that we got instead of showing alerts you can go ahead with showing an inline error i think uh user focus doesn't move a lot with that uh yes. other than that everything looks good man good stuff thank you sir hello yes sir hey so so these colors that you have for like customization mm -hmm. yes like in, so like these are some color combinations right not just a single color yeah these are so, themes basically inside one theme there is a secondary color primary color and a font color like that okay okay so like did you take this up from somewhere or just tried it out different colors no themes? i have implemented this with i have basically in css i have css variables defined in the root there are uh, as i shown this four themes uh, these i have named them as well so okay. basically you can toggle them by these buttons simple event listeners okay this looks nice
like so yeah. like uh, you, uh, yeah man go ahead puni yeah i was i was in saying anything go yeah cool uh so uh, what i said was ki i uh, used a bunch of libraries that you showed on in the ppt right uh i think used jump.js used what else magnific pop.js uh yeah, what did you use magnific for i used magnific what for i used it yeah i used it for implementing this image gallery acha the gallery uh, yeah interesting um okay man everything looks good just I, i'll just say ki uh, so if you are doing a very simple project instead of using a bunch of libraries try and implement them i think that's where the fun comes in not just reusing someone else's code uh it's a small project i understand you did very well you understood flexbox you read a lot uh, but uh, using some other library doesn't help a lot when you're doing such a small project uh other than that this is great yeah let's try a bunch of ui nitpicks i can take out but it's okay good uh arshid bhai would you like to add something yeah yeah so i was wondering one thing since this is your portfolio and you are giving an option to fetch others for portal data like i can type my id and get my data what is the point of having that in your portfolio uh honestly i don't think there is uh, but yeah i on uh, someone might feel it intriguing to just check it out for me yeah i did get you yeah yeah so why will i search gyan's portfolio id to get your data yeah that sounds reasonable yeah yeah so you can remove that thing yeah and the, again the uh, the thing which gyan has shared that there should be a back to top uh, something icon at the mid center or somewhere like uh, bottom right or bottom those are fine things yeah okay yeah it's so cool yeah also i think i think we said this last time as well uh, keeping a bunch of con- console.log statements uh, you can get rid of those as well instead of using console.log maybe use console.debug uh, so like people don't have default levels already set to verbose or something so i see a lot of console.logs in the code that's something okay um good stuff man hopefully we'll see a v2 of this i think it looks good keep on adding features to it yeah yeah you can always add other like handles rating from other handles so you can add board shape as well yes we different types of child uh can we uh, can we move it yeah yeah sure yeah so now we'll be uh, we have come to the end of the project one presentation so now we'll be having a 5 minutes time out in which we'll be sharing a link in the mm-hmm. youtube live chat uh, you can vote for the project which you feel is the best according to you and we'll be back in 5 so uh, let's meet in 5 again
Yeah, so after the first project, uh, we'll move on to the second project now. So the first one we have is Ishan Pandey. So Ishan Pandey, please uh, share your screen and turn on your video. Ishan Pandey. Good afternoon, everyone. Good, good evening, everyone. I hope my screen is visible. Yeah, man, one sec. Is my screen visible? Yeah. Okay. So, so first of all, I'd like to thank all my uh, mentors who were there and solved all my doubts and problems which I faced during the uh, uh, project building phase. Uh, so let's start with the presentation. So this is the web scraper project made by me, Shan Pant. Milestones, which I covered, is a Google search result, basically the first search result, which uh, uh, corresponding to the uh, uh, search query in, uh, given by the user. Then uh, they could also search on different websites for jobs, and they can also compare the, those jobs. The text type which I used was uh, for language Python, GUI, for, uh, Tikinter, and different Python libraries which I used were BS4, Request, BIL, Selenium, URL, Limit, OS. Description basically, uh, this is how my uh, GUI first page will look like. Uh, here, the user can click on any of the search button, uh, any of the buttons to uh, move on to the sub part of this project and search for Google uh, search, uh, Google search there. Uh, job search they can also do and they can compare jobs. This is how the Google search GUI will look like. And this is how the job searcher GUI will look like. They can uh, search across, uh, for different job titles uh, on the desired location. And they can also have, they will also have an option to uh, search on different websites. Uh, those will be LinkedIn, simply hired, indie.com, and opry.com. They can compare jobs in this GUI. So let's move on to the demonstration. So this is the GUI, main GUI, and yeah. So we get the first search result. Uh, there is a small description that is available on google.com. You can also visit that page, Wikipedia page. It will display all uh, the first uh, the search results on the first page. All this, uh, all the job available on the first page. You can, that. you can also visit 
kids they want to apply also compare jobs <laughs> let's try in india this time it's taking time because i used selenium uh, oh, sorry web driver uh, for requesting over uh, Nokti.com to spend data. So it's breaking because uh, I don't know because this uh, error, uh, uh, like Nokti.com is blocking my request. I don't know why. So I have included one video demonstration which I uh, also included uh, in my GitHub uh, readme file uh, at the time of submission. So I'll show that. working fine i don't know why it's happening right now i think it's because of the web driver which i'm using for making, making request for knockday.com everything was working fine at that time working fine i don't know why it's happening like i didn't have the time to uh, fix this error i encountered this error like uh, around five yeah it's okay time. yeah it's okay. okay this looks good man it's okay problems that I faced during this project was basically uh, uh, in scraping data as uh, like now I'm all uh, now today also I faced the problem in scraping Nokri.com so, not audible uh... Uh, Ishan so, yeah, you yeah. were not audible for the past 30 seconds, so I guess you can yes, what you said. Uh, like from where, from which slide like I was not audible? The problems faced, yeah. Problems faced, okay, okay. Uh, am I audible yeah. right now? Completely audible. Yeah. yeah so yeah. the problems which I faced during the project was basically in the scraping part, okay. Uh, I was not able to scrape, like, uh, for the main problem which I had during the project building phase was scraping indeed.com because I was not able to identify the static classes. Okay, so, and now I'm also facing problem in the scraping part only because in uh, uh, that knockery.com site is now blocking my request. Uh, so these are the two major problems which I faced and one is uh, one uh, problem is also I'm facing right now. That was that uh, knockery.com and then things which I learned uh, during this project is uh, basically everything like web scraping. Uh, before this project, I didn't have any idea about what was web scraping, what is Tkinter, what is Beautiful Soup, like Selenium, I didn't have any idea. So uh, during this project, I learned all of them. So that's it for my presentation. Thank you. Can you open the, uh, your application again? Uh, OK. This. 
uh, is my screen visible? So, uh, sir, haven't you packaged this application? You will have to run uh, script again. Is that it? Uh, sorry. So, uh, for opening the application every time, you will have to run the script, or you have make an executable. Yep, for uh, for opening this application, I have to run this script again. Okay. And can you try searching something super random on Google, which doesn't have any result? Let me send it here. It doesn't have any result. Can you try this? It all it will not because I have not handled that case. It is a true thing. Okay. And uh, uh, can you go back to go, go back one step where you have all the yeah. So can you open the job searcher? Okay. So what if I do the same thing here? Have you handled it here? Yeah, I have handled it. Just... It is not responding. So okay, uh, I would suggest you to have a company filter here because if I am searching for a software engineering role, then there are so many roles, and I want to spe uh, apply to a specific company or a list of companies. So you can have that accommodated in your application. Okay, definitely. And I also, agree. how how your job searcher is different from the compare jobs. Like I'll you see. can find the same same jobs here and same job there. How both are different? Uh, here you can see the result. Uh, all the, those uh, available on the like. Uh, suppose I uh, searched it on LinkedIn or any other website. So it yeah. will display uh, all the search results. Basically, all the jobs which are available on the first web page. Okay. And in job scraper, it will show only the first result, and it will show them side by side uh, for Nokri.com um, and basically all the four, all the four websites. Nokri.com. So LinkedIn. in compare jobs, you are fetching the data from different websites, and yeah. you are showing only the first result, right? Yes. Yeah. So what if I want to? I do not want to apply to that result, and I want to apply to some other uh, company. Then how will it result? If you want to apply for some other company, yeah, that like you are you are you are uh, fetching and displaying only first result. Let's say I want to apply to the second result. So then you can do can it. Apply? You can do it here. You can do it in the job search. So for that, I like again the same thing. Yeah, I you have to switch. You have to switch. Yeah. Hey, I have a question around that as well. Uh, for the compare jobs, like, uh, are you seeing the same roles for the same companies? Yeah. Uh, on different websites, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you are you are seeing the roles for the same company, or uh, like because you have a field of typing the job role, but you do not have a field of typing the company, I guess. Yes, I don't have that. So you are fetching the role mm -hmm. uh, for the same company from the all website, or? You are same. like your no, company. No, not from same different. company. Basically, yeah. your role pro basically same, but the company can be different. Yeah, they can be different. But yeah, okay. but only for search results. Okay. And uh, search this here. Uh, can you just add this random location also? Okay, so say. one question here. Uh, it says uh, uh, that the keywords are wrong, right? So are you searching yeah. for keywords like, let's say, in a job title, I write software engineer. So will it yeah. show up a job saying software developer engineer? Are you searching for keywords or the whole string? Uh, for the whole string. You're matching the whole string, right? Okay. Yeah. So if there is a typo, it. It won't work. Okay. It, no, no, it will handle because I have uh, for that I have uh, for generating the URL. Actually, I have used the URL lib library, so I passed that. So I think it will not. Work. 
so what i'm trying to say is like let's say you can try python developer without any spaces or so i guess basically i think puneet it's sort of like I'm giving the control to the website right you oh, can okay. you handle that uh, search wala okay. part and then i'll just capture the so he's not doing anything pre any sort of pre processing is it krishna okay. yeah that's what i want to do yeah also there is like uh, can you go back to the home screen okay try opening the google search so here there is a lot of like it is very slow to open like i'm trying yeah. to understand is there a reason for that because it's just a simple ui thing right you're not doing a lot of things in the back end which which should take a lot of time so uh, i don't have i don't think any reason for that why it's being slow uh, one thing i can tell is when you click the visit page so it's take it's taking time to open that uh, uh, web browser because i've used selenium for that okay yeah otherwise this looks good overall it's Yeah. So, can we move on to the second project? Uh, just a second, Bhavya. Yeah. Yeah. So, like a few final points, man, Ishan. Uh, so, I was just going through the code. Uh, so, in terms of Python, I think you could go with a virtual environment will help a lot. Uh, I think you're using a bunch of libraries. Uh, yeah. You've also committed a binary called Chrome Driver dot exe. Yeah. It just increases the Git repo size. I think you could add an external link to it. Okay. In your in your readme or something. Okay. Um. And uh, other than that, everything else looks good, man. Like uh, we'll probably have to go through some sort of. Uh, I think. Uh, are you using any sort of linter with Python? What? Uh, so so linter is basically a a, a software that basically. rectifies your code like uh it's sort of like a prettifier or something you can say or some uh some pep that you're violating for python so there's a bunch of standards how you write python code okay so linter will help you uh with those things ki, okay your variable name is not descriptive enough you have some extra white spaces so things like that so i think uh, there, there are a bunch of linters that you could try out i think there's pylint and What else, man? Punit, you are a Python boy. <laughs> yeah, I think Pylint is good. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I think all looks good, man. Also, good how, Bhavya, how, how are you yeah. testing it? Like, how do you test this? Uh, sorry, not to be too here. Have you written any test test cases? No, I haven't written any test cases for that. Okay. Got it. So should I? Uh, so I will recommend you to add test cases. That will catch the error which you have got while searching the random thing to the Google search, and you will where you have not found any results. Okay, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Should I stop presenting? Yeah. Man. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. Okay. 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 Pretty damn good for first years, man. Ishan. Yeah. 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 good stuff thank you yeah so let's move on to the second project uh, shambhavi singh yes bhaiya is my voice audible yeah you audible okay. so i'm presenting the screen sure is my screen visible yes it is visible okay so i'm starting with the presentation okay so this is my second project which is based on the theme of job scraping where we had to scrape job providing websites uh, i would like to thank my mentors who have been like support uh, who have been supportive to me throughout the uh, building phase of the project the tech stacks that i have used are the domain is obviously web scraping technology the language that i have used to write the code is python 
for the graphical user interface i had used tkinter and the libraries that i had used in most of my uh, code is a uh, bs4 web browser pi that is pillow library request in date time so what my project is actually about so this project is basically a job scraper which has been divided into three parts the google search results first url then scraping of multiple job providing website indeed shine which i had like scraped thoroughly like i have like almost covered the domains and linkedin i i had like partially scraped it not all the domains i had scraped it also the images that were available on the on the official website of linkedin i had tried to scrape that also then there is a job comparator which will help in uh, comparison of the two job providing website that is indeed and shine Uh, of the like the same keyword if you're like typing like uh, software developer so it will search for uh, that uh, profession for indeed and shine so in additionals the user uh, the gui that i had used is user friendly it is like a, a basic gui which is easy to understand for a novice who is who has uh, not that much knowledge but will easily be able to go through all the graphical user interface that i had created and uh, the detail scraping has been do done in the terminal like it displays the top to 11 to uh, searches in range of between 11 to 15 search of the required job Uh, this is the first milestone. Uh, this is a Google GUI, which I I'll demonstrate it further. Uh, this is ba a basic uh, GIF demonstration, and the, this is the second milestone, which scrape Indeed, Shine, LinkedIn, multiple job scraping website, and this is the link. Uh, this is Shine scraping. Then uh, this is LinkedIn scraping. Suppose I search data an analysis in Mumbai, so it'll demonstrate. It'll display the top extra uh, the job title. and the number of data that is available images have been extracted uh, link of the images as well as the images in the jpg format i was able to scrape but uh, not much of that much things were i was able to scrape in linkedin then this is a job comparator where the same job profession will be compared for the indeed results for comparison and shine results further for more detail uh, there is a link provided which will redirect you to the url page of the website that is indeed and shine so uh, now it's uh, i'll demonstrate the project so this is basically the google gui um so if i like type uh, python and then i'll scrape click on the let's scrape button so it will uh, this link will redirect me to the python page then uh, uh, if i go back uh, in the terminal all the headlines will be displayed like of the top searches of the query then moving on to the indeed gui um i need to make a visit for this is the indeed gui for like i suppose type of um data scientists and suppose let's type mumbai let's click on the first so it will display you the job title job location job summary current status and job posted update so this is for the for maintaining the accuracy so the viewer will understand clearly whether or not he should like he is running late or not to, to apply for the job so for that i had like added this then the job salary is there uh, if he wants to know more he can click on this site and this will redirect you to the indeed page so he, you can go through the job website about that job thoroughly and if the uh, whoever is viewing my uh, like uh, this uh, gui if he wants to like uh, uh, get more results he's not interested in the first like the first result is not uh, uh, pleasing to him so he can search like again uh, then if he searches again sorry i had searched data scientist data scientist like more then if we clicks on this button uh, more results in the terminal i'll run it up I 
and I displayed the uh, so it's a real like I was I guess it's printing lots of data so, it's so here almost like 15 to 20 top searches except of the first search it's available uh, URL has also been provided all the job title and all have been provided if you'll click on the link then it will redirect you the second means whichever search you're searching it will display the full details of that job uh, like uh, the uh, like 11 to 15 searches of the uh, first page has been displayed in the terminal so this is about the indeed gui uh, now if i go through the same is the shine gui as well only the um, okay i'm running it again so like for shine gui add uh, created the different gui for all so like for if in shine i type something different like i'm typing software engineer and i'm typing like uh, in bangalore let's say and i'm scraping so it will display how many results are there uh, then job title company name job location current status so uh, then job posted date and if you know want to know more you can click then it will redirect to the page of shine you can view the job and the same is there also for the terminal display uh, so if i like type in software engine uh, if the first result is not satisfactory for the viewer so you can like scrape more results in the terminal so here in the terminal it will display almost like 11 to 15 in the first page results then also the link is provided you can click click on this link and then open then it will open in in the chrome and then you can view uh, about the job so this was about all the different types of now the compare jobs so i'll open this and write in five and turn so this is basically it will compare the job for indeed and shine like it's just a, a gui to display both the results in same manner so it's it like i type software let's say type data scientist and let's help click on screen so the displays or uh, the results of Indeed and Shine respectively, job title, job location. So you can choose whichever uh, like uh, uh, pleases you the most. And here you can click on the links. This will redirect you to the Indeed page, and this will redirect you to the um, Shine results. So this was about the live demonstration. Coming back to the presentation. Mm -hmm. So the problem phase and what I have learned is basically Python was like very new to me. So at the starting, I had syntax problem with it. But later on, I got like it was OK to work with Python. Then it ha helped me handle. Uh, it helped me learn how to handle errors. Then scraping at first, it was really very tough. But uh, after I got acquainted with its mechanism, it was really fun to scrape, except if the HTML was like, if the website that I'm scraping, it had a clean HTML that I was able to understand. So for that, scraping was easy. LinkedIn was really hard to scrape. Even like now also, I have like scraped it half only. And the GUI was seriously very tiresome job to do. But uh, I tried to, especially the image fixing was literally different for me. Uh, but overall, lead was an insightful journey. It helped me to add on various skills, and it helped me know uh, more about my strong and weak points in the technical domain. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. That's it. Can you open the application again? Uh, yeah, it's open. Uh, which one you want? So like one thing is I want to point out is like uh, you do not expect like there will be some users which will be using or your application. And you do not expect to have them switch the context and see the result in terminal. Yes. So it's not good to show them in terminal, right? Yeah. Yeah, you should yeah. have shown it in UI and itself. And like, huh, one in a one in one GUI, all the GUI needs to be fixed. Yeah. And again, can you try some random uh, string? I, I hadn't like handled. I have not handled those errors. Uh, Okay, so in any of the application or thing? No, I haven't had it. Okay. Again, one thing, uh, you are creating 
different ui for a different purpose so if you like for the same purpose but for the for the different website so for the linkedin you have a different website for the shine for the shine you have a different ui for the linkedin you have a different ui but why would someone do such like kind of context switch you can provide a drop down button to select a uh, select a something select the url of the website and like you can show the result there itself yeah i like uh, started just only so add not add not that idea matlab like that i didn't game in my mind like when i was building mm -hmm. afterwards yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, Preet. Yeah, Preet. I had the same point that Archit made. Like, how are you planning to package this application? Yeah, uh, that because mm -hmm. huh. yeah, that yeah, same, uh, yeah, that uh, GUI needs to be combined in like one single GUI for like easy go through the all uh, through all the GUIs. So that I thought that it should be like added to it. Uh, so by packaging, I meant uh, like creating a binary or an executable which you can use, like people can use to open up your app. Uh, the problem will be like you're trying to show things in the terminal, right? And once it is an executable, there is no terminal that is that you can access. So I had the same point to make. But overall, yeah. it, this looks fine. Looks good. Um. Okay, uh, so Shampavi, like I think I'll go over this again, which is key. Um, like, okay, uh, let's go to the basics first. Like, how did you start learning Python? Like, where's the first place that you went to? Uh, I went to like Python. There was like a one uh, web, uh, I guess, Code with Harry. I had started Python. Uh, YouTube, right? Yeah, YouTube. Okay, uh, so did you like ever went to Python car documentation page or anything? Uh, no, I like referred to. I like no, I'm not like uh, all things I've done from that code with Harry. Like code with two days. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. So, so like first suggestion, uh, when whenever you're learning something, go to the document documentation first instead of a YouTube crash course or something. Okay. Um, right, uh, a few things around because. Because there are a few things that I can see in the code which finds a, a lot smellier than usual. Because like take it file names only, which caps may you have written. Compare jobs dot py. Yeah. So uh, so like in Python we use caps underscored uh, variable names for constants, not for file names, right? So there are a few things here and there. Uh, maybe like the pep or uh, so uh, have you heard about pep? No. OK, so uh, just Google about it, Python PEP. Uh, it's sort of a conventions, a list of conventions used by Python developers all around the world. I think PEP8 and uh, uh, the other one, I think PEP8 is followed, right, Puni, right now. Uh, so yeah, so have a look at that, use a linter, things like that. Uh, other than that, I think Puneet and Archit mentioned about the like uh, making a single UI package the application. Uh, but I think for first years, this was good. Uh, just focus on writing good code because other people are going to probably read it, right? Yeah. So that'll help a lot. Other than that, I think good stuff, man. Yeah, great. Okay. Thank you. Should we move on to the next project? Uh, yeah, I guess we can move on. Okay, so Mama. the next is uh, Vishal Agarwal. Vishal, you can start your presentation. Good evening, everyone. I am Vishal Agarwal, and I am here to present my project on web scraping, which I made during IEEE lead. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, it's visible. Yeah, it is visible. Uh, Vishal, can you turn on your camera? So this was this is my project for IEEE. Uh, the tech stack used the language which I used was Python. The main GUI framework which I have used is Tkinter, and the major libraries are Mechanical Soup and Regex. 
uh, milestone complete. The first milestone which I have completed is the I display relevant results to a user's search with the help of Google. Then I have a separate section where you can search for a job title and a job location, which will give you results from two sites, Indeed and Simply Hire, and give a three to three different job postings. I built a GUI and I did some uh, data cleaning on the data, which was not very consistent. So I have to manage some things. So now let us move on to the project demo. Uh, so this is my Google search result uh, UI, where you can search anything. So here are five links which I uh, which I scraped from Google. A uh, few things which I did here was generally the href tag which Google, the href tags doesn't have the URL in them is a Google query to a Google URL. So basically, I use regex to find out the main URL from them. And in some when I was testing it, I found out that some searches like Python were giving the result of the same site, but different sections, which were uh, the difference was they were using hash for the section, which is the idea in the CSS ID. So I uh, made a function to remove that CSS ID and give only unique results. Now next part is uh, this job search. Here you can find anything uh, related to any job title and you can give a location. Uh, this takes a little time because I am using mechanical soup and mechanical soup loads uh, is a temporary is a virtual browser which doesn't have a GUI. Yeah. So the uh, one feature which I was trying to implement was that when I am giving the uh, links to the site of the site to the user, I am not giving them links of indeed and I tried to not uh, give them the link of Indeed and Simply Hire. I tried to give them the link of the company itself. So uh, like in this one, uh, this is from Simply Hire. If you click this, it will take you directly to the company site. Here, the company is not a very big company. So they are using the Intenshala uh, platform. And I tried the same for uh, Indeed, but it is using JavaScript and Mechanical Soup doesn't support JavaScript. So a uh, possible option could have been Selenium, but I was not able to implement it in time. So I made that available. I uh, made this URL from Python and was able to make this card visible. And that's it. So amazing presentation. Uh, let's move on to the judges. Um, Vishal, you can uh, mute yourself, I guess. Yeah. So. Um, Yandhya, you, uh, you would like to say something? Um, cool, man. Uh, good project. I'm just going through the code base just a bit. I think if you need an urge, you can go ahead. And... So uh, you haven't implemented the compare feature, which everyone is implementing? Compare. Uh, compare. My, basically, everyone, what everyone is uh, showing as comparing the jobs, they are basically listing both the jobs uh, simultaneously because the data on the sites are very inconsistent. If I choose a parameter like salary, so half of the job post will not contain the salary on one side and different side. So the basic solution which everyone adopted was to print the results from the different side together. I both the functions together because I didn't thought it makes sense to give the user to search from a single website because yeah. it can be done from the site itself. Right. And what about if I put something random? Or like, what is happening in your case? Yes, uh, that is tested. I can show you that. Okay. 
and you are showing only uh, four or five result or five results because the problem is with overflow uh, in this uh, there is no overflow but i have restricted the number of links but in the job scraper part there was a very uh, problem there was a problem about the overflow of content from the screen and make i tried to make it storable which led to a whole set of another set of errors so i decided to use the a gui feature known as pack and i packed both the uh, jobs side to side and what if i do not want to apply to one of these six but the seventh or eighth result how can i do that mm, till now there is not an option for that but i can implement it with some next button or something because every time you click search i am clearing this results i have the them saved so that can be implemented but for now is not implemented okay and what are you getting when searching the random thing in google uh, from the which when the like can you search there is a string in messages of this meeting link have you do you have that you can try this Okay, you have handled all those cases, and you have handled this in web, like your job uh, UI as well, right? So one suggestion I will like uh, suggest everyone those who are showing UI that you are not providing the company name. So since there is a there are a lot of results, and I want to apply to apply to let's say uh, Goldman Sachs, then how will I do that? I will have to go through a lot of result for. Uh, position so that's there is something which i would not want to do i would like if you can provide a company option also yes yeah, yeah i will try overall, overall it is good because like you are in first year and you are doing such things like, this is very good only do you want to ask anything no you covered everything so i am good but yeah this looks really good nice job yeah man like as compared to others i think this is really good uh in terms of code base as well uh wait so i see a pip file i see a pip file dot log file uh okay and you're using like a linter as well so that's good um good stuff man uh okay just wanted to uh, know like uh, uh whenever you're trying to scrape through i think beautiful soup i think i see i see a, a a header that you set called user agent right uh what sort of significance does it make uh like, generally google is trying to prevent uh, uh, web scraping in general because uh, it uh, causes the server to it can cause the server to uh, crash if enough number of requests are pushed off so we have to uh, set it as a parameter so that it acts like a fake user is using it using it in a normal browser so it is kind of a disguise uh, so you're basically telling ki i'm impersonating as a as a as a user instead of a robot or a script yes uh, um okay and so uh, what if i remove those headers like will the script still work you tried that uh, it will say that the permission was denied okay cool man um awesome like also like i think the code base and the uh, things that have covered uh, did you ever go to any of the websites that you are scraping to the robots.txt file of any of these websites no uh, generally uh, Oh, nearly all of them have uh, are against that. Uh, okay. I went to the LinkedIn and many uh, different sites, which I was unable to escape due to the same JavaScript thing. 
mm-hmm. and many of uh, nearly all of them were against it. Okay, cool. I think I'm done here. Yeah. So, um, with this, we have come to the end of the second project as well. So now we'll be posting again a voting link, so you can again vote for the project you feel is the best. And we'll be coming back in five minutes at seven thirty-five. So we'll be back in five.
Okay, so now we'll be moving to the third project. The third project was the COVID dashboard. People made uh, trackers on the COVID data. And uh, we'll be starting with Hriday Garg for this project. Hriday, you may start your presentation. Good evening. Good evening, Hriday. Is my screen visible? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So I'll present the third project, IEEE Lead Project 3, which is a COVID-19 tracker. The tech stack that I used to build it was HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The basic milestone that we have to complete was fetching the world data. That is the total cases, deaths, recovered cases, new cases, and new deaths. The fetching the current coordinates of the user and then getting the country and the state data. Third was fetching data of any state that is entered by the user. The additional features that I used were added alerts according to the number of active cases in the search region. Red if the active cases are more than 30,000. If the active cases are between 5,000 and 30,000, orange alert. And if the active cases are less than 5,000, the green alert. Also, I made the website responsive. What I learned was making API calls and fetching the required data. I came to know about geolocation and reverse geocoding. Also, I gained confidence in using JavaScript through this project. So now I'll show you the working of the site. So this is how the website looks like when you open. It has total three sections. The first section is the world section, which shows the data of the world. The second section is the location section, which shows the data of the current user's location. And the third is the state section, which show, uh, shows the uh, stats of the any state or union territory which is entered by the user. These three buttons are associated with each section. If we click any of these buttons, the other two sections will hide and the, current, uh, and the click section will be, will be visible. So when we open the site, the default section is the world section, which shows the world data. Here we can see the total cases. And these are the new cases, total deaths, new deaths, and the recovered. If we click on check stats, here it shows my location. And from this location, it takes the country and shows the data of the country, which is India and the state Haryana. Also, based on the uh, active cases of Haryana, it shows an alert below. So as the active cases are between 5,000 and 30,000, an orange alert is shown. Third, in which you can select any state or union territory. So for example, Tamil Nadu. Here it shows the data of Tamil Nadu and it shows an alert based on it. You can search any other. So this is the website. Should I stop presenting? Hey, uh, how are you getting these data or this it? So uh, I made API calls for the three different APIs I have used. Uh, first one is for the world data, in which uh, I'm making an API call to the API. And from there, I'm getting the JSON object from which I'm extracting these data. In the location section, I am first using the geolocation to get the latitude and longitude of the current location. And then using that latitude and longitude, I'm making an API call to get the current location. From that, I'm getting the country and the state, and then uh, again, an API call is made or for that country and state to get the data. And same for the state. Uh, if we, uh, uh, based on the state that user selects, I'm making an API call for that state to get the data. Of that. But uh, since you are showing, uh, like when you are getting your location, you are showing the data for the state, right? So yes. why, why would one will go to choose this option instead of going to the check status of any state? Like you are showing the same data in two different options, right? Yes. Then what is the point of having this? If you uh, are you're not showing my district or something. Uh, I wanted to. Like show if I want to see the data of Haryana, I can easily go to the uh, check status of any state. I will not have to share my location to your uh, application. 
Yes, I was going to show the data of district only, but the API that I was using, uh, not all district data was there. That's why I use state only. Okay. And how accurate is this location is? Because for me, it is going uh, Narsimpur and I am not not now it, it is not 100 percent accurate but uh, because i am also in uh, like sector 45 it is showing sector 37 but it is very close so for me the location which is it showing is 540 kilometers away yeah same for me i am in prayagraj according to this i don't know i didn't face this issue at my location. Interesting. Um, yeah, for me as well, I think it's a lot far. I think probably it's the uh, ISP's location or something. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, man, so what, will, what will happen if I do not allow? Uh, the Chrome to uh, detect my location. Uh, the the can data you be... Can you go to that button and disallow your location and retry this? The data will not be shown. It will be on update. It will show up. But will it show it for the world or any state in specific? It should. It was showing for the world. I don't know what error is happening. There is some error. If you go to the console, you are. Okay, there are too many. I have exceeded the yeah. uh, request for the free API. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like that. And oh, one more question from me. So yeah. this doesn't happen. Like this doesn't update real time, does it? No, it is not real time. It is uh, uh, like at midnight 12 with updates. OK. OK, the cool. rapid API updates it, right? Can you repeat? So you're using rapid API, right? Yes. So rapid API updates it at 12. Uh, I think Puneet Mentor is whether the user sees it real time on the website, right? Yeah. Cool. Um, also, uh, you've used an API key, a public API key in the header is getting fast. Uh, and also in the code, it's hard coded. So, like the API key is public, or anyone can use it. Or is it I'm not sure. It's rapid API. How does it work? It's free API. So, uh, you just have to sign in and it provides the key. Okay. Um, And this looks good. I mean, it's okay. I put it to the website and it's, and it's free. Uh, so there's a few things in your JavaScript that I see is like uh, you used uh, a wait a lot, but uh, never cached an error. He, okay, as I think uh, Archit said, he, uh, if the location is not provided, user doesn't know what's happening, right? Uh, so you need to show some sort of error. He, okay, uh, you have to provide the location as well. And the UI is not stuck on updating. In the code as well, you're just using, like, in a function, it's just an await call uh, over a fetch. And there's no try catch block saying, OK, whether the request failed, you should catch it. Whether the whether there was like the two too many requests or error, you should catch it and show that to the user. OK, the website is down for some, some reason. Things like that. Other than that, I think it's OK. Also, you could like split your JS file into a bunch of files. It's like too long. Okay. 
Yeah, I think I see because like I see sections, world data start, location data start. Yes. You could probably yeah split it. Um. Also, man, use spaces around equals, please. Okay. Yeah. Or use just just use any linter. I think in JavaScript we can use ES lint or Prettier. I think they go together. So, uh, other than that, good work, man. Like, uh, I think you're using Bulma, right? For CSS. Yes. Yes. Cool. Good stuff. Should I stop sharing? Yeah, I guess you can. Uh, yeah. So let's move on to the second participant. So Ishan Pandey. So we have Ishan Pandey again for this topic as well. Good so hi Ishan. You can. Uh, uh, I hope I'm audible. Yeah, but there I'm is audible. a there is a bit of disturbance at your end, I guess. I can't help it with yeah, okay, no, 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 no. Okay. Uh, is my screen visible? Not as a clear. Uh, I think it is slow. It is slow. Uh, yeah, no, okay. present. Excuse me? Yeah, go Presentation. So basically, the third project is was uh, to be a uh, um, stats tracker deep, uh, app and I've made it. So the tech stack which I've used uh, is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And the features and also the milestones which were uh, which we were uh, which we had to cover in this uh, app uh, to fetch the world COVID stats. Basically, the total cases, the recovered the total recovered cases uh, right now in the world, and uh, the, the deaths and the critical cases. And uh, also, I have fetched users' current location by uh, first uh, using geolocation API for latitude and longitude. I fetched their latitude and longitude, and then. Uh, I have fetched their address using the Mapbox API. Then I have also fetched uh, country-wise COVID stats, and I have also fetched uh, for India all the states in India. I have also fetched their COVID stats, and I have made the website responsive. The problems which I had faced in these uh, in this project were basically making the website responsive and handling the asynchronous JavaScript. And the things which I learned in this uh, project, in this project building phase, was basically everything which I uh, which I was asked to do. Basically, make the uh, website responsive using APIs, fetching data with them, handling JSON objects, using keyframes and animations in CSS, and also using vanilla JavaScript. Ah. I ha have handled uh, the data dynamically and also uh, the dealing with promises. So, now moving to the demonstration the website. So, basically, this is the website. So, this is the landing page on the website, and uh, uh, there are four parts. The user can select uh, any one of them. So, like Let's go and select the world COVID stats. So you can see this. Uh, I have displayed the total cases today. Uh, cases uh, uh, today we have uh, uh, got it. Uh, total deaths, today deaths, recovered cases, and all that. Active cases and critical cases. You can also switch to uh, uh, search for any country. Like if we search for India, that will display. Yeah. It's just like the cases in India. You can also search for uh, 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 different states in India, and uh, it will also give you an alert based on the ratio of uh, uh, basically the uh, uh, change in cases, change in cases by active cases. If uh, the ratio is greater than two, it will show orange zone. If it is less than zero uh, or zero, it will show uh, a green zone, and if it is greater than two. Uh, then it will show uh, a red zone. Okay. So if I search for the current range, yeah, okay. and there I have also. Yes. Uh, 
so I've also included some informative links. Uh, where basically, according to me, people are not aware about uh, coronavirus and actually they do not know the scientific facts about them. So I've, uh, I've included a link for that, how vaccines work, and also when uh, uh, Google, uh, 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 like it's in uh, website uh, like google provides a kind of uh, basically the uh, things which you have to follow to not uh, get infected and also you can also uh, basically fetch data at your own location so my uh, country data and the, the state which i am current, uh, currently in. so that's all about my project Hello. Uh, was hey. I audible? Yes. yes. You were audible. That's a great so job. That was yeah. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Audible. Yeah. Hello. So, Am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay. Yeah. Everyone is audible. <laughs> Cool. Uh, great job, man. This looks really, really good. Uh, I have one question. So how are you searching this? Is it just on the front end? Mm. Like when I search for a country or a state? Or a state? I'm searching for a country or state. Like, uh, I don't understand. Uh, I'm saying like when you're searching for a country or a state, is it only on the front end? Uh, the filtering that you are doing, or are you getting things from the back end? Or is there an API call? From the back end, from the API. Yeah. Or an API call there. Yeah. There is an API call. Yeah. In an API call. Like basically, what is happening when you uh, I've already uh, fetched data for the countries, and uh, in that JSON actually, uh, uh, I'm searching for that. Basically, it's making an API okay. at the genome, which is uh, which I see in that number. Okay, when, like, in your case, hello, hello, yeah, you are on your voice is breaking, you can switch off your camera. Am I going to see? Yeah, yeah, I should. So, what happens when you do not allow your location in your application? Because for me, the UI doesn't show up. Yeah, that will not open actually. Uh, it will not do anything if I don't uh, allow the location. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it looks good. And the same point here. If uh, uh, you are fetching my location, then you should show my district data because uh, I am getting uh, my. I was, I was trying to do that because. Uh, yeah, I was trying to do that, but uh, the API which I was using was not very. Uh, uh, correct uh, in terms of data basically uh, the data was not reliable i think because uh, okay. there was some missing data okay so i was not able to do that okay okay overall it looks good it's amazing yeah i had another question uh, so the zoning you are doing like green zone red zone orange zone uh, yeah. like have you done it on like you said like you are creating a, calculating some ratios if it's less than zero greater than two right yeah so yeah. Uh, how have you decided on yeah, those yeah. ratios it's kind of i don't have any uh, like uh, one, you can't decide your, so your voice is breaking uh, okay so am i audible right now you can stop sharing your screen as well. Good. Maybe that will help. Okay. Am I audible? Yeah. Or still yeah. breaking? 
you are audible now go ahead okay so uh, what was the question again can you please uh, the question was the ratios that you are uh, that you have uh, yeah that was completely that random uh, okay that's that's random okay cool Anything else the judges want to ask, or should we move on to the next one? Um, yeah, we can. Move yeah, on just this. one question. That's it. Uh, so, okay. it's not like a, uh, just going through your app dot js file. I see a lot of inner HTML, right? Yeah. Uh, so, are you aware that JavaScript has like a has an API called create element? No, I'm just not aware of that. and just google it whether create element is a good idea or using it in a html is a good idea good okay i'll definitely do that okay. i'm i'm done man let's move on to the next or are we done okay so we we'll move on to the next one okay so the okay. last Thank one for you. today's presentation and the third project is shivam kumar shivam you may start your presentation Hello, am I audible? Yes, you yeah. are. Yes, you are. So, good evening, everyone. My name is Shivam Kumar. I'm here to present my project based on COVID tracking organized by Triple E. So, to begin with, the text tags I used to build my website are HTML, CSS, a little bit of SAS, and JavaScript. The features of the website are. World data retrieving live number of active cases, recovered cases, confirmed cases, and deceased cases. Real time location tracking, fetching all details of users' current location. Loader animation, a loader animation, which is activated whenever fetching data from the API. Country data, fetching all details of the search country. State data, details of all the st states of the search country. Graphical representation, graph plots of active, recovered, confirmed, and deceased cases. Graphs can easily be switched with a button press. Alert functionality. different alerts based on active cases which is triggered when user performs a search or uses a tracker functionality alerts are divided into three categories safe zone moderate and red alert okay so now let's switch over to website okay so as you can see uh, there are options for getting global data local data and a search for a particular place i can uh, i can visit global data page by clicking the Uh, button here the details for global covid cases are displayed such as confirmed recovered active and dead i can view any particular graph graph by clicking uh, like this so uh, as you can see a load animation is also being displayed while the data is being touched uh -huh. also sorry for the poor internet connection that's why it's taking some time for the straight part it's okay sorry Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. The API is also a bit lengthy, so hmm. okay. Can I just refresh the page? Okay, so uh, another feature is track tracking functionality, where it will show the location or uh, and uh, alert based on the uh, user's location. Like this. Also, I can uh, search for any country. Suppose I search for Japan. So it will show me all the details of Japan. Uh, also, if uh, if the country has any states, uh, and a uh, window will uh, uh, form will appear like this, and uh, representing all the states or provinces, whatever. So suppose I search for Tokyo. Here the cases are moderate, and uh, same thing. The graphs are there. Also now uh, the website is also responsive. I can so this is the desktop version, and I can shrink, and it will adjust itself. Uh, hamburger menu. Okay, 
and uh, uh, a contacts page. That's it. Hello? Yeah. 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 So what was the API call that was taking a lot of time? Uh, the states, uh, the state one, uh, this one. Uh, like uh, if I go for India. Actually, what is happening now? Uh, I click on recovered. Uh, the global and see uh, my internet connection is stable now, so, so it's uh, uh, presenting. But that time it wasn't because this this takes what this takes time. Okay. Uh, it so takes time because uh, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it, uh, it takes time because uh, the date from uh, 14 to 21 uh, till uh, today, uh, what it does is uh, it uh, um, the API gives uh, uh, details of all the districts. So what I'm doing is filtering the search district. So that's why it takes some time. Okay, so you're basically filtering on the front end. Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Which API are you using? Uh, a Postman. Uh, I used an API from Postman. It was a free API. Mm -hmm. Should I provide the link of the website? Um, no, I think you can ask it. Okay, so it's the COVID-19 API. Ah, of uh, Postman website. Postman. So Postman is just a client like... Uh, ah, yes, 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 it's a client. Ah, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So why is it showing Maharashtra by default? Uh, because uh, it has to show, show something. Matlab, there's no logic. I just uh, put Maharashtra uh, as a, means just a default uh, state to uh, something just to present there. Mm -hmm. Nothing but else. You could have like you could have said that uh, select something. Uh -huh, I could have, but just a default page, something like that. I can switch from here, like uh, India has also, the states are also dynamic. This will change with the country, search uh, country. How so, are you uh, creating these graphs? Are you uh, using, using chart.js? Chart 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 yes. Okay. Uh, yes. And uh, what about track me? What does it do? Uh, it, uh, it is using the HTML geolocation API. Uh, for okay. getting the latitude and longitude, and it's uh, reverse geo encoding using a uh, uh, yeah, uh, location IQ API. And what happens if I do not provide any location? Uh, no, I haven't handled that, so it will just be a blank page like uh, like this. I can handle it, but I forgot. No problem, but your UI is very good. Can you? Go to the India graph for active cases. Uh, ah, yes, there's a problem with the API. Uh, the spike is because uh, uh, this, uh, matlab, uh, from the month of February to month of April, there's a gap. Matlab, in the API, there's a gap. There's a gap. Uh, mm -hmm. The data is not available in the API. So okay. there's a spike. Uh, I'm aware of this. Uh, I have, matlab, it's the problem with the API only. Like for the global cases, it is not isn't for uh, the here also it isn't. But uh, for uh, India, there's a uh, gap in the API. Okay. The data is not available for that part, so it's spiking. Okay, okay. This data is accurate, right? How? Uh, uh, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Not hundred percent. I mean, I can. Uh, I've compared to Worldometer, and uh, generally, it's accurate only. Uh, I mean, the global data is uh, mostly accurate. Uh, for India, the uh, for India also it's accurate, but for the global, I think the active part isn't that accurate in the API. Uh, I mean, it differs a, a bit. And I wasn't getting any free API which would uh, provide all the functionality which uh, I wanted. So I had to go for this only. 
basically i wanted what what i wanted was a uh, uh, list of cases uh, from the beginning or from a historical period of time but that wasn't available in any of the free apis so i i only had this option no worries no worries uh, one more question i had so how are you deciding like which zone a particular state is in uh, that so i see a basic simple logic uh, on the number of active active cases nothing else uh, just like uh, if the cases are greater than uh, 30000 uh, it will be a red alert if it's uh, 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 smaller than 15000 uh, it will be moderate and uh, smaller than uh, 1000 it will be safe zone like suppose uh, uh, it's india suppose i search for andaman nicobar uh, i can uh, here it's safe zone because the active cases are just one in 15 so the population of andaman also comes into picture ah yes yes i haven't implemented any what do i say so any logic behind the active i just implemented it for showcasing something else the logic behind the alerts it's i know it's not accurate not can, exactly can, can you try uttar pradesh because i see 22000 active cases and you said 30000 is the limit right but still it shows like a red zone alert acha uh, i may have i can i just i may have changed the okay uh, I just uh, uh, sorry, it's fifteen thousand uh, above fifteen thousand. Cool, cool. Yeah, this looks good. One suggestion, though, like deciding which is a red zone, you should do it based ah, on yes. the number of facts. Right? Yes, yes. Uh, I did not implement any logic behind that. Uh, just act number of active cases, nothing else. Yeah, but this looks really good. Great job. Should I stop presenting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, Anubhav, I think we can wrap up. Um, I think we should go for the voting first. Yeah, we'll put the, the link. Like, the link will be shared for voting, and five minutes uh, for five minutes, the poll will be open. so you may please vote for your favorite projects
Okay, so now we come to the end of this uh, seminar, webinar. So now we'll have some few words by the judges. We'll start with Archit Bhaiya. Yeah, so uh, my experience was really great uh, while seeing the project because you guys are in first year and you are doing such thing and you are learning so much in 
ten uh, days. We are creating a project in ten ten days. So there is a quite of a huge learning curve. So if you see it that way, it is a very good thing for a first year to achieve. Because I remember when I was in my first year, I used to uh, like I used to discover everything about every technology. I used to make a make some projects uh, like some dummy projects. But yeah, it's good that in first year you are learning so much and keep doing uh, these things. It it is very fun and yeah, it will be very good for your future if you if you will keep up like that. And all projects are equally good and there are not. any like there are not any thing like if you are not first then do not get disappointed your work was really good we'll have to decide something we have to give the position that's why we are giving otherwise you all are equally good so, thank you okay thank you bhaiya now we we'll move on to the next judge punit bhaiya yeah just like archit said i think this was a really really we, they were like really really good projects uh, like considering these were from first year students so it was really great a few things i would suggest you guys like uh, even though you are in first year you have done such a good good job you should also now like now that you know so many things get into understanding how uh, how to write code how to write good quality code and all those things like for a few projects gyan mentioned about linting and all those things so uh, try to explore these areas more and yeah this was a really really fun experience great job guys Okay, thank you, Bhaiya. Now the final judge, Gyan Bhaiya. Um. Uh. Okay, man. Like I think Archit and Puneet said everything. Um. So this is really fun. Uh. And then uh. Yeah, as Puneet said, you should like uh explore more. It's you've just like uh uh like had like a surface of it, right? Scratch like the surface of coding. Uh. So you need to uh, make some more projects. Look at other open source uh, good projects out there. uh there are a lot of github projects open sourced and uh, you can understand their code base uh, read the coding style so right now you, uh, if you have worked on python you can see a bunch of python projects out there and um, understand that how they are built every i think open source project has a contributing guide right follow that uh maybe read upon those things uh i'll also recommend like if you have uh, done this projects like maybe write unit tests for those uh i think it will help you understand like some more frameworks as well and uh, some industry best practices right uh, other than that i think great job uh, for first years and uh, keep on doing it man like just don't stop jis din ruk gaye us din se problem hona shuru ho jayega everyone's working at the same pace uh, thanks man thanks i triple yeah okay th- thank you yeah that that was really enlightening now we'll move on to the results hey before before you go to the results like thank you to you guys as well like you did a great job managing this event so yeah thank you thank you bhaiya okay so bhavya we'll start with the results you may announce the result for the first project yeah so for the first project any guesses who will be at the third position we'll take guesses for 5 seconds in the chat if anyone is interested so yeah you can go ahead if anyone wants to guess something okay so the third position goes to lohit takash uh, malhotra lohit takash malhotra yeah lohit takash malhotra The second position goes to Mayuk Pankaj, and the first position goes to Sarvjot Singh. So this is for the project one. Uh, now let's move on to the project two. Anubhav, uh, you may announce the results for project two. Okay. So for project two, we'll again take guesses for like five seconds. For the third position, you can give your guesses for all the three positions. for second and third okay 
okay we will we'll now be announcing the third position goes to shambhavi singh and then for at the second place we have ishan pandey and at the first position of course we have vishal agarwal that was for the second project now for the final third project bhavya you will yeah. announce the results so for the third project uh, the third position goes to hriday garg the second one goes to ishan pandey and the first one goes to shivam kumar so with this we have come to the end of the event um and thank you everyone for being a part of ieee lead 2.0 and let's meet again in the upcoming events thank you thank you so much thank you everyone and congratulations to all the winners